at this point, I'd like to invite our, our panelists uh, on stage. Um, uh, I will uh, introduce only uh, Vivian Chow, uh, who is a journalist and uh, the founder of um, Art Journalism Campus here in Hong Kong. Uh, she will be our moderator for the, the, the panel discussion, and uh, I'll allow her to introduce the, uh, the other panelists. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to our panel discussion. Um, New Trends, the impact of the next wave of international gallery openings in Hong Kong and beyond. So joining us for the discussion today, um, in addition to Magnus, um, so we have um, um, Emmanuel Parodin. So um, Emmanuel founded his first gallery in 1990 at the age of 21. Um, and then he has since opened over 18 different spaces around the world. In May 2012, Parodin was among the first international galleries to open in Hong Kong. And, and then we have um, Isa Lorenzo coming to town all the way from Manila. Um, so educated in Manila and New York City, um, Isa is the founder of the Civil Lens Galleries. And um, Isa also has served on the board of the Museum Foundation of the Philippines. She's a Towns, Towns Foundation awardee, Outstanding Women in the Nation's Service for 2016. Last but not least, Daphne King, um, and I'm sure a lot of you know Daphne. Um, so Daphne joined Elson Fine Arts in 1996 and was promoted to director in 2005. In 2011, she form formally took over operations at the gallery. And Daphne is also a patron of the arts and she's been involved in a lot of organizations, including the Ink Society, um, a patron of Asian Cultural Council's um, Friends Circle, and in 2018, she was awarded um, the Women of Hope Award in the category of Art and Culture. So um, I think let's start our discussion. And I would like to, I would like to start with Magnus, kind of follow up to what you um, um, talked about. So now we're talking about the next wave of um, international gallery openings in not just Hong Kong, but beyond. Um, so you are you will be launching two fairs next year in Taipei and Singapore, which you also just mentioned. And I'm, I'm curious of how, um, how these two fairs in, um, in outside, of, um, outside, of, outside of mainland China, um, how, is they go, how are these fairs going to, um, go, going to make an impact on maybe bringing the next wave of um, these international gallery openings? And how, how are these fairs going to help the um, uh, international galleries approaching approaching um, these territories, um, particularly outside of uh, outside of mainland China, and also the impact of on, on the local scene. Um, well, maybe first uh, starting with um, with with Taipei. Uh, the the reason why we're organising an art fair there is. Uh, is, is not really, uh, in a sense, out of competition with anyone. We're, we're trying to create something. We want to have a positive sense of, uh, positive definition of our identity. We want to kind of chase the dream and not the competition, if you like. Um, and there are many reasons why a, a domestic or regional art fair in Taiwan and Taipei makes sense. Um, you know, there's a, a, a long established uh, collector base. It has really one of the strongest collector bases in Asia, even when we were. Um, looking at the original positioning for Art Hong Kong, that uh, Taiwan and Korea were, even at that stage 10 years ago, acknowledged as two of the strongest collector bases in the region. Um, and over the last 10 years or so, when I've been um, speaking with, with galleries that participate in Art Basel in Hong Kong, and Art Hong Kong and, and other art fairs elsewhere, they always cite the importance of the Taiwanese collectors as, as being instrumental to, the, to, to their success. And um, I think that there's, there's a desire for people uh, from international gallerists from elsewhere in Asia and from the West to have an opportunity to engage more with, uh, to create uh, sort of deeper links with collectors from the region, uh, with, from Taipei and from Taiwan. But in addition to that, I think that uh, 
further after my time at Art Hong Kong and Art Basel, when I returned um, uh, briefly and unsuccessfully to, to, to Bonhams, I, uh, I was really, I spent a huge amount of time in Taipei and I was really struck by the number of collectors that I had had no contact with previously through the art fair and through through the galleries. And so there is a there is a considerable audience of buyers that are buying exclusively from auction currently from Taiwan that I think have the opportunity, if we do the right things in the right way, if we can provide the right context, then we can provide an environment that they might feel comfortable to take the leap to buy from galleries and from art fairs. Likewise, um, I think that there's uh, a collector base of uh, collectors that are perhaps collecting in different categories. So collecting perhaps more traditional categories of antiquities or modern Chinese art, uh, and also impressionist and modern art. And again, it really comes down to this, uh, providing a context that they will, feel, they will feel comfortable in taking the leap into buying from new, from new channels or new collecting categories. And through having a rigorous selection process, that's something that we um, we hope a context that we hope we can provide. I think even by the third year of Art Hong Kong, the participation in the fair became like a stamp of quality, if you like, and that's something we're looking to replicate in Taiwan. And Singapore, um, Singapore, um, Singapore. I think you know, as I, as I mentioned in my um, brief, uh, briefly in my discussion, there was. Um, you have to look at the natural catchment area of any particular location. Southeast Asia is an incredibly uh, 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 large and substantial audience. There's about 700 million people in ASEAN. And if you look at, at that in comparison to, to Europe, for example, it's, it's far bigger. And there's a, incredible uh, uh, wealth in that part of the world as well. I think on paper, it stacks up very well. The reality on the ground in Singapore, I think, is much more challenging. And I think that there's there's a lot of things that we have to work on and, and get right to make it work. But I, th I think that uh, there, there there's a huge opportunity there to to, to create um, create something meaningful for the long term. But I think it has to be done one step at a time. I think that also, in, you know, you mentioned briefly uh, about in your question about making things successful for the international galleries that are participating. Uh, I think uh, it's one one of the ways that one can ensure that is to not include too many of them. So you know, in terms of of, of the for the fair in Taipei, um, that we are only including twenty galleries from the west, of which ten have spaces in Asia, and the remaining ten, probably five, have full time representatives in the region. So I think that it's important to try and create um, a, a context that is appropriate to the market. Thank you, Magnus. Next, I would like to ask Emmanuel a question, actually a few questions. Um, since you opened the Hong Kong space in 2012, so your gallery has been as expanding to various locations across Asia, including Seoul, Tokyo, um, and most recently, Shanghai. So first of all, why do you open so many outlets in Asia? <laughs> Hello. Uh, I will I will try not to repeat in all the good arguments given by Magnus. And thank you for everything you explained. It was perfect. And I agree with the majority of what you said about our move in Asia and our expectation. Um, I have this gallery for a very long time. And I started in 93 to do an art fair in Yokohama, Nikaf Art Fair in Japan. And in 93, I was going with my luggage with uh, artworks inside the luggage and met. Uh, some collectors was very surprised to see a young guy with works of uh, unknown artists at exactly the same price of the price I was offering in Paris. And uh, I built a very strong relationship with uh, Asia at this time. For sure, culturally, uh, I was very interesting by Asia, like many people. But to open many gallery, you need to follow also the dream of many of your assistants. I have a very good team and uh, many of them are able to have their own gallery uh, if they decided to leave me. But finally, we decided collectively to build uh, um, new adventures everywhere. And when you open in Hong Kong, you open a hub, a hub for, uh, and for sure you have a, a very good local uh, scene here and very interesting big 
But we will lie to pretend we are coming for that. All of us was coming there and uh, uh, with the intention to, to be at the good place where many people come to visiting from the rest of the Asia. When we open a gallery in Seoul or Tokyo, we, we are not going there to, to, to see people from the rest of the world. We're coming just for the local scene. And it's very important today because if uh, we are galleries at the time of internet with a lot of communication where maybe, uh, you know, we, we have gallery visiting by Instagram, uh, uh, you know, easily. Many, many people, much more to any time of the uh, art history, uh, the, the gallery was not visiting like that. We have thousands and thousands of people looking at our photo every day. And, uh, but it's still very important to have a, a physical experience of the works. You need to, to enjoy the works in real and to, and to provide it, uh, um, a, a quality moment to all the visitors. And we cannot expect, uh, to have people visiting an art fair during five days with thousands and thousands of people to imagine we have time to, to share a real experience. And, uh, I, I participate to 21 art fair. Okay, I don't go to tell you art fair are not important. They are very important. They are very important for us to match uh, a new audience, to 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 make the life of our uh, clients more easy, because the art world sometimes demand too much efforts to our uh, buyers uh, that have to stay a passion and not just a professional activity to to go all around the world, but. In addition, Gary, like me, trust on, her, on, her, on his team to, to provide it real information, to, pro to provide a, a, a real moment with them and to be able to introduce the more delicate artists, the more, I don't have the vocabulary, I'm sorry for, for my English, but we, we have, I have a profile of Gary a little bit different to all the, the major dealers we, we, we named before. I, I can still doing very young artists and have the, the usual suspect very famous for the very big artists. Okay. They, they maybe don't need to spend too much time, but for some young artists, we need to, 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 to introduce their works and, um, and to open four gallery in Asia looks to be a lot for, but we have to reconsidering also the opposite. Why, why art gallery was not developing a network? until the 21st century. Why the gallery at the end of the 20th century was exactly the same type of gallery to the 19th century. And if you, if you remember 30 years ago, a bags of a luxury brand was four or five city on it. And it was already looking exceptional. And 30 years after it looks a joke to have four or five city on your bag. And, uh, the, the art world have to protect artists to be not factories. They have to protect the, the, to give, to give possibility to them to to develop their work uh, um, on, a, you know, without too much obligation and and in fact, to have a gallery representing different city helps them to have to escape to develop personal relationship with too many people because it takes time to give trust to a dealers. It give t it takes times to to follow the inventory everywhere to follow and and. And also very few dealers, when I started to open gallery everywhere, was taking the risk to take an unknown artist, producing their works, taking them on different art fair, taking them on a, a solo show in, uh, in, in, in their country. And in fact, we really try to bring our test, our uh, um, uh, artist everywhere and, and not just to, to uh, try to match a market. It's also a real desire to, to, to give a voice to our artists and not just uh, a commercial aspect. It's, uh, uh, we are very proud to produce all this show. You know, they, they are, you know, to come back to something, I never started my gallery in uh, Hong Kong with a group show or inventory of unsold works from previous show. From the first show, we was doing show with artists. And we are very proud of that. And, uh, and an experience to open gallery on different city is you learn a lot from everybody. We, we learn, um, 
the the difference of uh, cultural difference for sure but also we we learn some new idea to 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 acting on different aspect of of the gallery activity and uh, i'm always surprised by discussion we have where we with with our team where sometimes we are not agree with them but sometimes we come back on it and we think maybe they are right we have to change the way to do and uh, and to 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 adapt ourselves to the context but I imagine your next question is about. Uh, I, I'm afraid to anticipate the question because we get them. Doc, I go to let you <laughs> maybe ask because I can speak too much. That's why I have my telephone to show me <laughs> the time. But it's tough. It's, it's okay. We have. Oh my we, God! We it's time. already. I'm already finished my time. No, I realize I'm gonna, that. Sorry. I'm going to ask you one more one more follow up question. We 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 do have a bit of time. Um, so how I, I I'm curious of how how you decide. Um, which city to open um, to, to open an, um, a gallery? Um, so, what are the factors when when you consider? Oh, uh, okay, next next place I'm going to be in um, Tokyo, and then Seoul, and then so on. And at the moment, although I know you just opened a space in Shanghai, but are you going to? Uh, are you also looking at other other places around Asia, Taipei, for example? I really hope no, but. Uh, but for sure, many people approach us, you know, the, the, some, you know, in different city, we are approached to do a gallery, but it, it's really a human r relationship. We, we were starting to have somebody working for us in uh, Seoul for two years, and she was doing a good job. And we, we get a lot of press about the gallery, and we understand it was a very close market to uh, 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 local dealers, get an advantage to have a gallery there. And... Our artist was invited regularly to exhibit, and we see many interests, and it's happening like that. We're opening a gallery there. For Seoul, it was like that. For Tokyo, it's different. We have many, many uh, Japanese artists. We were spending a lot of time to go there to work on with, uh, with every of them. And the difference between an office and a gallery in Tokyo was very little. And, uh, and we love to open space. I love to do architecture. I love to... To to, it's a it's a disease maybe, but uh, I like to open gallery. Don't we open Tokyo uh, in this way? And again, we don't open there to stall the artists from the the city. Maybe uh, you you we I have fifteen Asian artists in my gallery, but I don't have them because I need to match the the country where we show. It's much more when we have. Uh, uh, a good experience there. We are very interesting to invite this artist to show in our other city. Let's say the Korean artist showing in Paris or New York, or but we don't show them in Korea. And you will be shocked if I was coming in Hong Kong, and I will taking all the best artists from the best gallery in Hong Kong, showing them. At the end, you feel maybe I don't take the time to take them, but in the same time, if I was taking them, you will be maybe afraid about the fact we're coming and we take everything. It, it, will be, it will be sad and I hope you don't expect from us to come to adapt our programmation to your test. You know, we, we're coming to offer you choice, you know, to offer diversity, you know. The, the French cinema for that is very strong. We, we help many people to, to produce movies from the rest of the world. And it's very, something very important for me. We have artists from India, from Iran, from Japan, from Korea, from everywhere, from China, for sure. But we don't do it for geopolitical reason. We just do it because we like this artist. And if we was doing that for wrong reason, you will see it very quickly. You will see it very quickly. Uh, and it's not what we want. I hope it's answered to your question. Shanghai, for the last one. Shanghai, for sure. Is it three years, my team telling me, Emmanuel, we have to open to Shanghai. It's very important. You don't understand. We have to open in Shanghai. I resisting. We was visiting many space. We was uh, looking many aspects. You know, I was scary to open in Shanghai. I don't. You know, I love the idea because I love architecture and we did a beautiful gallery. And thank you for your compliments about the space. We are very proud of that. Thank you to André Fu, a Chinese architect, we take for for the space. But again. It's very complicated to open gallery without to sacrifice your artist to overproducing. Don't you need 
also to take more artists. And you take more artists to, to, to make your artists not doing too much. And it's fantastic to take more artists because, and, and not to have to replace your existing artists in your program. Because many galleries, they have many artists uh, uh, during their career because they lost them. I was a lucky guy, don't lose so many artists. And, uh, and you know, after, 30, after 28 years of gallery, you, you are happy to bring new, new face. Don't you open another gallery? And you are in Shanghai with a very good team motivated to, to show to Shanghai, we, we are great dealers and we have a good program. And, and, it's, and, and it's a part of my pleasure is to give opportunity to my team to, to expand their job because some of them, because they left to another city, the other ones stay, take a new, a new engagement in the gallery. And it's make, uh, now we have 135 people working for the gallery. And, uh, and honestly, it looks crazy for me, but, uh, uh, but it's, it's like that. We have to develop. And again, uh, we are just at the beginning of that you will have a huge concentration in the art world. We can talk about that like a, a tragedy. We can talk about that like a, a, a problem, but this is the way because everybody expects much more from us. We have to take so much risk. We have to publish book. We have, we are all the big gallery have a, our publisher house and, uh, and we publish books not to make money, just to promote it, our artists, just to give a, an image to our artists. We, we have to organize all this fair. We have to, we do so much. We, every year we invited new things to offer to our artists to be able to keep our artists because we have all the shadows of another dealers uh, and we are afraid they try to steal our artists. And it's one of the bigger motivation is to keep a good relationship with our artists. It's not, you know, sometimes, uh, um, we will be happy to not uh, doing all this, but, uh, but I talk too much. It's certainly, <laughs> I'm taking the double of my time. I'm coming from Paris for that. <laughs> well, thank you for the um, very <laughs> Don't ask me another answer. question, you are afraid. I, I will, know it was I will come minimum back to four you. or five. But <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will come back to you. And now I would like to um, direct a question to Daphne. Um, so we've, um, uh, so we, 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 we've talked about um, international galleries and we know Hong Kong is now kind of like a hub for international galleries in Asia. And for you, um, as um, one of the pioneers of the Hong Kong galleries with Ellison Fine Art, so how do you see the um, changes over the years amid the arrival of these international galleries, particularly from your own, from your own perspective and your own experience, I, is there a good? Uh, I mean, everything um, has you know two sides. So, what are the what are the good things? Are good influences from these international galleries? Are they actually making local galleries to uh, up their game? Um, but on the other hand, are they um, are, are they competing with local galleries in terms of um, finding um, collectors? Thanks. Um, so actually, I, uh, Vivian had introduced me saying that I joined the gallery in 97, but I wanted to go back a little bit even further because the gallery was actually formed in 1981 by my mother. And so it is one of the oldest galleries here in Hong Kong focusing on contemporary art. And Magnus had talked about the changes kind of, you know, galleries being in Hollywood Road originally. So when we started, um, there were only really two major galleries. It was Han Art and Allison Fine Arts who dealt in contemporary art and um, in particular Chinese contemporary art. And although I didn't start working until 97, it, I obviously grew up um, surrounded by this environment. And if we go into the 80s, there was really nothing in Hong Kong. And it was probably true to say that Hong Kong was a cultural desert. Um, and in those days, it was very difficult to get people to come and look at contemporary art. It was not like America, it was not like Europe. People were not, they weren't brought up in that way culturally to appreciate art. Um, we would have people coming in and asking us, oh, this painting is $10,000 Hong Kong, not US, 10,000 Hong Kong. And they would, 
think that is so expensive. Why should we buy that piece of artwork? I'm going to go to Joyce at that time. That was the store that was around that sold all the designer brand things. They're like, we're going to go next door to Joyce and buy a handbag for $8,000. I would rather do that than buy a piece of artwork. So going back you know, to the 80s, the cultural scene in Hong Kong was very different. That was the type of mentality. And that's what we had to face as you know, when we were dealing with clients. Um, we were the first gallery to show Zhao Qi here in Hong Kong in the 90s. And at that time, nobody knew who Zhao Qi was in Asia. Um, paintings were close to maybe I don't, not even a million Hong Kong. It was in the hundreds and thousands of Hong Kong dollars. And that was astronomical for people to even imagine to pay that much for, um, for a Chinese contemporary artist. Um, of course, I wish we had bought all of them and kept all of them, <laughs> but unfortunately we didn't. My, my mother worked really hard, um, was able to place some of these works in collectors um, in Asia, in Taiwan, in Hong Kong, and in China. So that was kind of the scene that, that we started with. And then as Magnus had mentioned, um, you know, at the turn of the century, then international galleries started coming in. They started to look at Hong Kong. Uh, Chinese collectors um, started to travel abroad a little bit more, the scene became a bit wealthier, uh, and Hong Kong being the free trade port that we are became quite attractive to these international galleries, uh, and then they started to come in. Uh, and as a local gallery, I think because we've been around for such a long time and we have created a niche market, our gallery focuses on um, Chinese diaspora artists early on in the 80s because there was not a platform for these Chinese artists like Zhao Qi, Chu Te Chun, and Wallace Ting to exhibit. They hadn't actually been back to China. They left in the 50s and 60s, went overseas, and were better known overseas you know, in Europe or in the US um, and not known to their home country in China or in Hong Kong. And we gave them that platform here in Hong Kong to present their artwork. Uh, so we have always been known for that. And you know, talking about long-term relationships, we still have a relationship with, with, um, you know, with Wallace Ting. I'm working with their children now that the artist has passed away with Zhao Wuqi. We have still a very good relationship with his wife and um, with their foundation and Chu Te Chun. I'm working also with their son. So it's you know, very long-term relationships um, that we have established. And the other stream that we're, our gallery is known for is promoting Chinese contemporary ink art. Um, and that has been a hot topic in the last maybe five years, but it's been something that we've been doing since the 90s. Uh, my mother formed the Ink Society that Vivian had talked about, and I'm a director on that. And we promote ink art, just not in Hong Kong, but you know, overseas, uh, we organize activities. We're the symposium partner for one of the art fairs here for Ink Asia. Um, and we invite a lot of scholars from overseas to come and participate in that. So having said all that, I think the impact of the international galleries on our gallery in particular is not, is not huge. I mean, of course, there's an impact um, you're talking about in terms of competitiveness. It's not a competition because I think collectors who collect Western art don't necessarily look at Chinese art. But in terms of the change, what I've seen is that because of these international galleries bringing in Western art, a lot of Chinese collectors, and particularly the younger collectors, are looking more at Western art because they um, have gone overseas and they're educated there. They might have taken art history courses there. And those art history courses don't necessarily focus on Chinese art or Asian art in general. And so they, what they see in museums and galleries overseas um, is Western art. And so when they come back, and these Western galleries are here, these international galleries are here promoting these Western contemporary artists, um, they would have, you know, they, they gravitate towards that a little bit more than their cultural roots, what, what is Chinese, um, Chinese art. And so what I'm seeing now, uh, where we originally had a lot of um, local collectors, we're getting more and more international collectors, and that's partly because of the fairs during Art Basel week, um, and even in Asia, collectors from other places are coming in from the US, um, Europe, and they in turn are actually coming here because 
They want to look at Asian art. They want to see something different from what they see in their home country. So I'm actually getting more um, overseas clients um, now, you know, as, as a result, I think, of the art fairs. And as a result of the international galleries, we are getting more um, kind of young collectors looking more at, at Western art. So I think that would kind of be, in a commercial sense, the, the, the changes and the differences um, and the effects of these international galleries. Um, I think overall, though, as a kind of the art ecology has evolved in Hong Kong, um, definitely cannot be said that it's a cultural desert anymore with, you know, these art fairs, with the auction houses, um, with M plus coming up and with these really high quality um, exhibitions that these international galleries um, are bringing in. Uh, and I think definitely it's also affected the way local galleries look at their programming, like for me, for sure, um, I have to think much harder. Um, I'm planning two years in advance, you know, what type of shows I'm going to be putting together. And they definitely have to be of a much higher quality. Um, we're not going to bring out our old inventory, <laughs> like you had said. Um, it's so, the, you know, that also affects that because what people are seeing now is, you know, much higher quality. And in return, we have to produce something that is of a much higher quality um, as well. So I think it's overall, it's a really great thing that we have all these international galleries coming in. Um, and, you know, we are actually locally, we have, even if I'm, I'm looking back to just the, the early um, 20th century, uh, 21st century, when these things were blooming, the local gallery scene has blossomed also with local galleries. When, you know, when we started off, I mentioned it was just Han Art and Allison Fine Arts. Now, I think with the Art Gallery Association, are there like close to 100 galleries that are registered or around, 50, okay, 58. So there are a lot of, a lot and a lot of local galleries here um, participating in, in the art scene as well. And, you know, you had mentioned maybe the younger, gal the younger artists were having a hard time. I think for our gallery, um, as in what Emmanuel said, he has, he's also been promoting kind of a younger generation of artists. For, our, for my gallery, we're also trying to do that. We're very conscientious. We want to support the local art scene as well. And so at least once a year, if not more often, I have, um, I do showcase young emerging Hong Kong talents. Um, I make an effort to bring them to the art fairs that we participate. Um, in Shanghai, we just had a amazing, amazing time at 021 in West, West Bund. Um, we almost sold out in our entire booth at 021. And part of them were younger artists um, that I had brought, some emerging artists. So I think it's nice to have a mix of established artists and young artists um, and, you know, we're, we're lucky enough uh, that the gallery is able to have a mix of both of them, um, kind of been able to maintain that roster of galleries. Thank you, Daphne. I think I would like to add that um, I think the arrival, the arrival of international galleries, I think not just having an impact on local galleries, but also um, the, um, the, the, the gallery culture uh, um, among a general public, a wider audience, um, because because of these international galleries, I think there's, uh, there there are a lot more things happening in town. And now going to um, going to H Queens perhaps is a, like a weekend outing. You you uh, ten years ago you would never imagine like going to the galleries. It can be you know something that you would do over the weekend for you know a, a general audience because people still found it intimidating to go to to just walk into a gallery to look not buy. But now it's um, uh, I, I, I would I would say that people are much more open to just go to the gallery and to 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 look at art and to a certain extent I think this is a great um, very well, positive impact um, in a way. Um, now I would like to ask um, Asa and um, from. Um, what Daphne just said. So I wonder how much of that do you do you share um, in in your case? And um, uh, uh, it, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, at the moment, the so Philippines do not have any um, uh, outposts of international galleries at the moment. And do you think that it kind of 
in a way benefits local galleries? Well, first, um, good afternoon to everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, there is a lot of truth to what everybody has said. Um, I think we all come from different experiences. Uh, I would like to say first that um, uh, to, to add to what Magnus was saying, that in Manila, we have a very, very unique situation wherein we have an art fair, which is called Art Fair Philippines, which is like successful beyond anything I've ever experienced. And it, we are now on our seventh year. Um, about, and then I also have to uh, echo what Daphne said, wherein all of the international galleries coming into Hong Kong and coming into Asia, not just Hong Kong, we have also benefited from it because a lot of um, interest has come our way. So when people come to Art Basel Hong Kong or to the other fairs around the region um, who are looking at Asia but not really at China, or they see China but then they realize, let's see the other things going on. Okay, So that's us. So I would like to think we are the collateral bonus of, of the art fairs. Um, I don't particularly, uh, I'm not trying to reach China uh, in the way that I guess the, the Western galleries are, because it's, uh, I mean, we're from here and we know China is very, very opaque. So I would rather concentrate on growing our neighborhood um, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, even Australia. Um, I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm in a sort of a different situation because uh, instead of trying to get out there and join as many art fairs as possible or try and get as many artists as possible, we've really grown our artists from the ground up. I mean, because when we started, that was also a cultural desert. Um, we started in 2004, and if I, if I told you the stuff we had to establish as ethical practice, you would think I was joking. But, you know, over the years, 15 years on, um, we've managed, and it's still an uphill climb against the wind, but people are taking note of our program, our artists, um, our country. We have a very, very strong local base, um, and this is actually what allows us to go outside of the Philippines. Uh, we have very, very committed collectors who are very resistant to buying international stuff. So yes, we benefit, and yes, that's probably why no, no other galleries have come in and opened in Manila. However, there are collectors who have made this straddle, okay, they don't leave the local collecting audience or the local collecting um, uh, milieu, but they also expand their collections, which is great, which really uh, attests to the strength of our Philippine aesthetic, if you want to call it that. Um, it's, yeah, it's, and, and I spend a lot of time, I mean, we all, I'm sure we all travel so much. Uh, we spend a lot of time really nurturing our artists, um, doing critical work, museum work, biennale, triennale work, getting curators to come over, meet them, getting them to do residencies, getting them to see as much as they can, um, which will inform not just their practice, but the ripple effect to the other artists that they will eventually or already do mentor. So it's, it's, it's best cultural practice, not necessarily best gallery practice. So we try and, you know, we try and grow that. So that's where we're coming from. Thank you, Issa. And so now I would like to ask a um, question for all the um, panelists. Um, this is something that's based on, um, this is a question based on something that's, that was, uh, that's that just that came out just very recently. So um, there's this study. Um, there's a study um, called "Quantifying Reputation and Success in Art" so that was published in Science, as an academic journal. And um, so basically, what this study um, is about, in a nutshell, is um, the correlation between um, the success um, of an artist and the artist's network. 
um, rather than the the actual quality of the art. Um, so in this regard, um, I think galleries are very important to uh, to an artist's career, especially in building up the the, the network um, for these artists. So. Um, but then, of course, the different galleries have different kind of um, will offer different kind of networks to artists. And I wonder what um, our panelists will ha um, can comment on that in terms of offering networks or providing networks to um, artists that will help uh, build their career. And do you see that international galleries actually have a much have a bigger advantage in terms of this kind of network building. So, yeah, back to you, Emmanuel. <laughs> um, it's always a kind of uh, caricature to imagine a big network of gallery is able to build a career of an artist of an artwork not so interesting. In fact, this is a quality of the artist build a big network of ga of a gallery different you know um a gallery like me will not existing with my programmation uh clearly i i've started to work at the age of 16 years old i started to work in a gallery at 17 and at 21 i opened my own gallery i didn't have any contact uh, with the art world my family is not connected and uh, i just discover uh, some uh, i did the first commercial show of damien hurst it looks strange, but I was doing that in my apartment. And uh, uh, I did uh, uh, Catalan in 92. I did uh, Murakami in 93. I did Philippe Pareno in 89. Uh, Pierre Huig in, um, I don't know, 92. Uh, yes, I, I lost Pareno and, uh, and Pierre Huig, but... Uh, and the fact working with good artists build a good network. And when you have a good network, you have access to a bigger list of artists agree to work with you. And it's no reason we compromise to take a bad artist to, because it's easy for us. And you are right. When we start with a young artist, and honestly, we don't have so much elements to anticipate if he will be a good artist. A part of chance is, uh, is there. But you can feel the energy. If you take them at the very beginning, you, you, you don't know enough. And, uh, and yes, for sure, a big network helped to make an artist unknown with reasonable price, very easy to our sellers to sell them because they, for sure you have an expectation of a part of the market to think, oh, if this artist is in this network, it's a big chance the price increase. And it's for sure uh, uh, a big frustration from a, a, a part of the, of the market, but I cannot, regret to be on this way now just because i started from the very beginning and i'm the proof it's possible in my certain of my uh, competitors was able to build an artificial network with a lot a lot of money opening gallery like you will uh, uh, open a show and uh, and yes on this case i can understand the frustration but personally i was just doing good artists give me a good network make my young artist successful faster, maybe to another network. Okay, I have maybe to apologize of that, but I don't know exactly why. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think it's us. It's um. I mean, to echo what you're saying, I think that a network is important, but first and foremost, I think the quality of the art has to be there. I don't think you can make an artist who's not good into you know a top selling, amazing, internationally recognized artist. Um, so first and foremost, we have to have the quality there. And then, yes, the networking is important and it does help the artist. And um, probably if you have an international gallery, your networking is stronger. But um, from personal experience, uh, even though we're only a local gallery, um, I like to think that we have quite a strong network internationally. I work with all the major museums that have a Chinese contemporary art collection. Um, and with all the probably major collectors who around the world who collect Chinese ink art in particular. So I don't think it's necessary 
that you have to have a huge, huge net, uh, a huge, you know, many, many galleries all over the world to be able to give your artists that type of network. Um, I think what's more important is that the quality of work and then that um, if your gallery is quite focused um, and, you know, you kind of know what you're doing, people recognize you in that field and um, they will naturally come and look for you and be able to work with you. And, um, you know, and that way, that, that's how the kind of the networking all comes about. So I think it's all kind of about, you know, about the quality at, at the end of the day. I, mean, I, would, I would agree with that. I think that from an art fair perspective, I, I like to think that you can judge an art fair not by the best gallery that's participating, but by the weakest gallery that's participating. I think that kind of consistency of quality is what people are looking for. And I think you can actually apply the same logic to to commercial galleries, that it's really about the the weakest gallery or the weakest exhibition in their program that, that kind of gives you a sense of their... But that's their, sad, what you yeah. said, because for a gallery not to try to bring a new artist on... Uh, you know, yes, some gallery decide to make their list totally clean, perfect, on the perception of uh, mm. uh, some Ayatollah uh, of the art world. But it's very sad because our... It's not because we are a big gallery, we don't want to, to, to try to help some new artists to develop their works. And yes, we take more risk with them because we don't know exactly what we will have. But if we don't take this risk, Honestly, it's uh, you, you. You can be just an art dealer, and you are not a gallerist. But some gallerists are transformed step by step in art dealers. The only thing is their artists are alive. But honestly, I much prefer to make mistake, and to be considering like a so-so gallery. Considering I have my booth a little bit too full of work sometimes, and I apologize of that. We we really try not to do it, but some people do it. Some assistant masking me the simulation of some booths to be able to do a booth, not really on our perception, but I, in a way, they are right also. Because if we are all acting like what some people want in committee of art fair, you will have only very big gallery doing always the same suspect and some young gallery doing until the moment the artist will be successful, they will be stolen by the big one. It's not exactly my perception, and I will be. I'm very happy to make mistake. No, I think that that's. I think that that's. It's. It's really important. I don't. Don't think we're disagreeing. I think that the. I think that the. Because the, in your in your in your version, I totally yeah. understand. I understand who are the best galleries, the one taking no risk. I don't agree with that. <laughs> I think that they, I think the best galleries are taking risks, and I think that it's about the sensibility of the people that are running the galleries, that they have um, a sense of what interesting art can be and they're willing to be able to take risks on on younger artists who show great potential that show that their work is genuinely intended that has quality that has something about them that's worth pushing so i don't think it's necessarily about having the usual suspects I, i'm kind of that that's antithesis to what i kind of really genuinely feel i think that it's about i, I think that great art is about um or, or great artists have have different elements to their work, which is, you know, I, my, my own view is sort of that has the four H's of head, heart, hand, and history. That for work to be genuinely interesting, it has to be have conceptual integrity, has to be genuinely in intended, and that artists are not appealing to a, to an audience that they would be still making work if nobody was looking. Hand, and that it has to be have some kind of technical ability, even if an artist is negating their technical ability, it it, it is demonstrated through their work and history in terms of the context of their work and being aware of what's come before them in the context in which they're producing their work. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be established and famous and and uh, uh, and uh, have international consensus. I agree, but some Gary Tech now, I take some estate artists, you know, and for sure when you take an estate artist, you know exactly what you will have. The works are already produced. Now, some Gary now take in proportion, much more estate or much more modern artists, you know, to young artists because they understand they are not so good to build young artists, but they look much more powerful or uh, 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 chic or I don't know what, you know, uh, because they have this kind of artists. But honestly, you know, I feel sad of that because uh, uh, I'm so happy the weakness of my gallery 20 years ago or 10 years ago from where I was criticized to do this and this artist, 
And today, this artist was criticized to me are considering like the, the power of my gallery. And I'm much more happy by this evolution. I will surprise you, but artists like Maurizio Catalan was considering like a, a very, just a joker, you know? And now by the same type of curators, he's considering like one of the best artists in the world. Cause artist was considering like just a street artist, or, you know, or many of my colleagues was considering him like, a, you know, just a street artist, you know, with all the elements you have in mind when you said something like that. And now he's considering like one of the very important artists. I'm very proud of this evolution. And I understand the lower artist I have right now will be maybe my best artist tomorrow. And I really hope that because the the best now because they're good already. That's my point. They may not have the reception. I'm just saying that um, the, the the current context for the reception for the, for their work may not reflect their true uh, potential. But you recognise that they have great potential already, so that, that they are the real deal. And Isa, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, just talking about network artists gallery. I think it's very much a partnership between the artist and the gallery. Uh, the art. The art gets made by the artist. The art artists engage. The artists engage with whoever the audiences are through their work or maybe through themselves, and um, the gallery puts it out there and the gallery supports it. So, in the from the very beginning, we've had this partnership, and I really I see, you know, my artists who we've grown up with. They are also very much my partners, and um, it's been it, it's a cycle. You know, some years are good, some years are not, but that's it. I mean, it's a marriage, you stick to it. Um, and then the second thing um, is about networks. Some, some artists where I come from or in the region come with very, very big networks, but they're not necessarily good artists. But there's a lot of money behind them, and there's a lot of money that was invested in them by these networks. So we're constantly, like Emmanuel said and even Daphne, we're constantly being offered artists who will make us a lot of money, but we're not interested in working with them because at the end of the day, there are more interesting artists that we can spend our time, energy, and, and, and resources on. Yeah. Daphne, did you have something? I was just going to follow oh. up on what Emmanuel said about um, about you know working with emerging and young artists, I I personally find that much more rewarding as well. I mean, I I named some of the bigger artists that our gallery works with, but when we started off, they were not the big name gallery, uh, big name artists that they are now. Um, in fact, our gallery, the original name of our gallery was called Arts Promotion when we were first founded, and the whole premises was to promote young artists. Um, and so, following in that footstep, I you know we. We continuously look for young artists to work with emerging artists. Um, a lot of them are local artists, uh, some in mainland China, and also um, a, slightly with a particular focus on women artists, um, because that's also some an area that's under-recognized. Um, but definitely, I that to me is one of the most rewarding parts of working as a gallerist. Um, you know, like Emmanuel said, if you work with these very established artists already, you almost feel like you're just a dealer almost, if you want to say it worse, is like a used car sales dealer, because you're just kind of putting up there these names that have already been established, and you can probably make more money with them. But for me, the joy is going down there looking for these young artists and finding them and helping them through their career and through the path, um, you know, with the network that our gallery has um, to help promote them and, and put them on the world map. Um, and so, yeah. But, but when you're when you get some very international artists, very big from the beginning, you know, you feel a real uh, passion so to continue rewarding. with them. It's totally different to take them when they are already famous. You know, to, you know I'm like a, a beginner with Takashi Murakami every day, you know. It's like a new adventure. We have to find some solution, some evolution of the, for his career. And it's really a... Uh, an engagement, a serious engagement, and a real pleasure too. I was just talking when you take them already famous. Yes, it's. I think maybe, um, maybe I, I, maybe based on based on the discussion, I, I, I would have some questions about that study that was published. Maybe they need to redefine um, the meaning of 
success. So success is not just um, about profits. Um, so now I would like to open um, the discussion to the floor. We're, we can take a, a couple of questions from the audience. So, um, okay, there's one question uh, at, at the back. Um, to ask a question that I think um, is in everybody's mind, and maybe Emmanuel, you were expecting it. <laughs> um, you've obviously spoken about your personal experience. Um, it's your own trajectory, so I'm sure you support it. But can you actually comment on the, the structural challenges that the gallery industry is facing today? And it is a reality that small and medium-sized galleries are increasingly finding it challenging to survive in an environment. And it is true, despite your uh, personal examples, that a lot of the small and medium-sized galleries are the ones that produce, take the risk, and generate the pipeline for the bigger galleries. So the more of them that disappear, potentially the more this pipeline will, will um, linger. So um, there, there is undoubtedly a lot of positive aspects of how Hong Kong has developed. But it is also true that in this city, this um, effect that happens around the world, it's even more acute. So um, taking a position outside of your own gallery trajectory, can you comment on the industry structure? Um, to be an art gallerist, don't need any diploma. I don't need any license or anything. Many, many people was opening a gallery uh, just by uh, passion. Uh, they, you know, they was opening a space and after they was thinking, oh, I have to find a, a program, you know. It's a, a very specific industry in this sense. It's a, something we feel, oh, let's, let's open a gallery. I love it. I'm 40 years old. I make a lot of money on this business. But now I want to be part of this industry. For sure, now many, many dealers realize it's a real business and they are... Uh, uh, in competition and uh, and yes we, we we always speak about the numbers of gallery will close but we didn't speak about how many gallery was opening you know uh, before and this effect of concentration will happen but uh, it's it's sad because we need all the laboratories it was very great the pyramid of the numbers of artists get access to the to to to, to exhibit their works uh, uh, grow uh, sorry, my English is so bad. Uh, we we have much more artists to be for exhibit around the world, and in this sense, it's fantastic. After, for like you know, it's very difficult to imagine everybody succeed. You know, and uh, uh, I, yes, it's difficult for mid-career galleries because uh, the the expectation of the artists are bigger and bigger, and the one of the power are the artists now, the successful artists have the power and uh, and you you cannot expect the dealers will not compete between them to 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 arrive to a scale make them able to keep the artists it's like that it's uh, we can we can regret the the difficulty for everyone but uh, let's all buy more works to more gallery and everyone will stay open but i don't know exactly the solution for 